If efficiency is so important in antitrust, then why doesn't that word, efficiency, appear anywhere in the antitrust statutes that Congress actually wrote and actually passed? If efficiency is the goal of antitrust, then why am I charged by statute, by law, with stopping unfair methods of competition and not inefficient ones? I'm Stacy Mitchell. I'm the co-executive director of the Institute for Local Self-Reliance. And we, together with the Open Markets Institute, uh, co-hosted and organized the Midwest Forum on Fair Markets, which is an event that we hope to do hopefully every year that will bring together um, people somewhere in the Midwest for a conversation about monopoly power and really a chance to shape the direction of antitrust and anti-monopoly policy. Farmers used to make 40 cents on every dollar spent at the grocery. Now they make about 16. They are going out of business by the thousands. We have a noose around our necks and we're standing on an ice cube, said one of them. Another said, it's like being picked apart by a chicken. This was uh, Commissioner Bedoya's first major speech on antitrust, and he really wanted to have an audience of you know, ordinary Americans, small businesses, farmers, uh, working people, and, and so on. He didn't want this to be you know, a speech that just happened in DC policy circles. He wanted to get out and, and, and really connect these issues. So a family walks into a, ph a pharmacy, their child has cancer. The pharmacist has the child's medicine behind the counter ready to dispense. But when that pharmacist calls the pharmacy benefit manager or PBM for the family's insurance company, they are denied authorization to give the family that medicine. Instead, they are told that the medicine can only be dispensed by the PBM's own mail order specialty pharmacy. The family was to go home and wait up to two weeks to receive the medicine for their sick child in the mail. What is so beautiful about the speech is it's just so well grounded in you know, the actual ways in which this misguided approach that we've had to antitrust is actually playing out and you know, harming people and communities. And he does that beautifully in these real stories. Today, when most people fill a prescription, just one of those three vertically integrated entities mediates the medicine they get, how much they pay for it, and how they'll get it. And that corporate entity profits by making sure that prescription is filled by its own pharmacy, even apparently when that's cancer medicine and even apparently when it will take up to two weeks for a child to get it. The way he saw antitrust policy, and I think he's, a, he's absolutely right, is that this is a kitchen table issue. This is a Main Street issue. This is about how our families are doing, how our communities are doing. And for too long, these policy questions have been just divorced from you know, reality on the ground and from regular people's lives. 1936, Congress passed the Robinson-Patman Act. That was the law I was talking about earlier that banned, quote, unfair practices like secret discounts, secret rebates, available only to the large and powerful. When it passed that law, Congress went out of its way to say over and over and over they were trying to, quote, keep open the door of opportunity for the small businessman as well as the large. We are dealing with a massive monopoly problem. I mean, our economy has grown incredibly concentrated. You look at one industry after another, whether it's agribusiness, retail, healthcare, I mean, all of these industries are now controlled by a very small number of very powerful corporations. And we've been experiencing a whole host of problems from that. Lower wages, uh, farmers are seeing their income squeeze, small businesses are being run out of business, communities are really suffering, consumers are paying higher prices. Um, so as that kind of evidence has mounted, it's become really clear that our antitrust policy is not working. I think it's time to return to fairness. And we should return to fairness because people may not know what's efficient, but they know what is fair. It may be efficient to send a child home to wait two weeks for their cancer medicine. We all know it isn't fair. It may be efficient to force cattlemen to sell their livestock to just one meat packer. It may be efficient for Pine Ridge to go without baby formula. We all know that that is not what fair markets look like. I think this speech is something that we're gonna look back on 
in a couple of decades when the changes that are happening steadily but surely in, in antitrust enforcement, when those changes have taken uh, a really full, full force, we are gonna look back and along the road see key landmarks. And this speech is gonna be one of those key landmarks.